Hey everyone, this is Nick Dearbertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about forecasting complex time series in Python using the fin statement package. This is part of our lecture series on free cash flow estimation and forecasting. So we already talked about uh, simple versus complex time series and uh, some basic uh, models that you would want to use for each. And we also already looked at an example of how to fit the quarterly seasonal trend model for complex uh, seasonal time series uh, in Python. Now, this video is focused on uh, using a more automated approach to dealing with complex time series, which is going to be able to handle additional types of complexity beyond just the seasonality. So let's go over to the Jupyter Notebook, which is on the course site, uh, the quarterly financial statements uh, notebook. So I would encourage you to follow along on your end as well. Uh, so we're working here on the forecasting using the automated software approach section. Um, and before I discuss, uh, we have some installation things to talk about here. I'm just going to go ahead and um, get this forecast running because it does take um a little bit of time to do that um so and then if you're just jumping into this you would want to first run this this first block in the notebook to get the statements defined in infant statement um but so in order to uh do the automated complex time series approach in fin statement it actually uses another package under the hood, this uh, profit package developed by Facebook, uh, which they use for their own forecasting um, and is flexible to a lot of um, features of the data as well as bad data, such as missing and, and outliers. Um, so it's a very nice system that they've developed for forecasting and it's just plugged into Fin statement. Now, it doesn't automatically get installed when you install fin statement. If you try to use the automated approach in fin statement, it will, without installing FB Profit, it will say, hey, you need to install FB Profit in order to use this approach. You can use the other forecasting methods in fin statement, uh, trend, compound annual growth, recent, and uh, average approaches. You can use all those without any other dependencies, but the auto approach does take this at be profit. Um, and the installation for this is um, a little different than what we've looked at previously in the course, uh, because actually FB profit is not 100% Python. Uh, there's actually a C++ component in there. And so you can't just install it regularly with um, the regular method for installing Python packages. Um, but I have encouraged everyone to use Anaconda in this course because Anaconda does make this process still pretty easy. Without Anaconda, it's fairly complicated to get all this set up. But with Conda, it's still just one line that you're going to run. But where you run that does matter before we've done the installing within Jupyter. Um, but in this case, you're going to need to go um, to the Anaconda prompt. Um, so if you're in Windows, you can just type Anaconda into the search, um, and you'll see this Anaconda prompt come up. Um, you should be able to access it similarly on Mac. Uh, and if you can't find it, you can also go to the Anaconda Navigator, and you should see the command prompt in there. So you can go that approach as well. Uh, but you should see something like this um, when you open that up. Um, and um, you'll want to make sure, um, I don't think this is necessary on Mac, but at least on Windows, that you run as administrator. Um, so when you see this pop up, then you right click and you do run as administrator. It does that little pop up. And then you can see it, it says administrator up here in the top left. Um, and so the command that you need to put in there 
Conda, that's Anaconda's package manager, Conda install dash C, Conda forge at the profit. Um, so put that exactly in there and hit enter, and then you'll see this um, collecting package metadata, solving environment stuff. It takes a little bit of time because it actually does need to install a lot of things to make this work. Um, and then eventually you'll see something like this um, where it says, hey, I'm going to install a bunch of things and you just need to put Y and hit enter to proceed. Then it's going to um, you go ahead and, and take some time to install these packages. Eventually you'll see uh, done and you'll get back to this prompt and that's how you know you're done. At that point, you can come back and uh, restart your kernel um, and then you'll be ready to go for the auto forecasting. Um, so I had already done those steps though, and so I already had it all set up and ready to use. You only need to do that once on a given uh, system. Um, so then um, the way that we um, forecast using FB profit within fin statement is with the auto forecast method. Um, so we have currently five different forecasting methods in fin statement. Pattern annual growth rate, trend, mean, recent. These all uh, work just with fin statement, no external package. Uh, and then this auto, which uses FB profit. Um, and so just to see how it works for everything, uh, we can use update all to set the forecast um, method to auto for every item. Um, and so we'll see now in the uh, forecast assumptions that we have uh, method auto for all of these items. And we ran the forecast, which I did a moment earlier. Um, and so now we have the forecast statements. Um, so you can see because we asked for 12 periods here that it went ahead and got us 12 periods out into the future um, of the entire financial statements. And it was also able to detect that the historical data was quarterly. And so it also used a quarterly forecast going into the future. Um, we'll also notice that um, the balance sheet is um, basically, uh, you know, not 100% balanced, but it's close. Um, so 191, 187, uh, 191, 187. Um, and so um, after the forecast is made, then statement goes in and balances the balance sheet for you. Um, so then we have this plotting functionality in fin statement. So we can do plot on the forecasted statements and we can give it a subset to say which items we want to plot um, or we can plot the entire results with just doing plot and no arguments. And so um, you know, looking at some of these forecasts, um, you know, we can look at the revenue here we can see the points here are the historical, the black points, um, and then we don't have those once we get into the future. And uh, we start to see a confidence interval on the forecast in the future. Um, and we can see that it seems to have picked up this pattern well, even though we didn't um, you know, tell it anything about this is seasonal data or anything, it just was able to pick up that pattern. And when we look at all the plots, we see those kinds of patterns uh, going on in a bunch of these different line items. And it was able to pick that up in most cases. Um, so yeah, again, looking at the forecast assumptions, we can see the method was set to auto for all these items, uh, except for the uh, items which are ultimately uh, being used as a plug uh, to balance the balance sheet. So cash and long-term debt will be adjusted uh, because they're the plug items. You can also change that in the config if desired. Um, you can also pull out individual um, forecasts um, like that. You get a forecast object 
um, and you can um, see what the model was. Um, and so that can tell you some things about um, results, um, et cetera. So there's a lot more detail if you want to dig in there. Um, you can also access the plots that way, get nice full size plots. Um, in order to look at any individual item. So uh, we have this whole configuration system in FinStatement uh, where you can update how any item is forecasted. So if you do tab complete on the statements object, you'll see all the different line items. Um, so that would be like the, the key for the um, item. And you can update it by um, that key in the config. So we can do a config update on SGNA in the forecast config to make it a percentage of revenue. Uh, if this is a company that uh, their wages scale uh, with their product very easily. And uh, we can update the interest expense to now be forecasted with the mean approach because when we look back at the and let me just get this running because it's going to take some time. Uh, oh, whoops, I didn't uh, actually run that update. Um, so when we look back at the interest expense forecast, um, we can see um, that it is basically picking up some kind of seasonality component there, but it doesn't seem to really exist um really it looks like an average is is probably a reasonable way to go with these data because they're kind of just going up and down around basically an average um and so we can shift just specifically that item to be forecasted with the the average or mean approach instead of using this auto approach so this is you know a typical um procedure for this, you kind of just, uh, you know, pick a method and, and go, um, or even just let it take the defaults for everything and go uh, with the forecast. And then you look over all the plots and you just look through and say, does anything look like maybe the forecast is not fitting very well? So interest expense kind of stands out. Um, don't worry about the cash and debt because those are the plugs. So they're being adjusted just to make sure that, uh, the balance sheet can balance. Um, but just looking through the others, um, they seem to generally seem fine. Um, Goodwill's kind of difficult here because the, the last four periods have been high, but that was much higher than the rest. So it's not too clear, maybe the recent approach should be better here to just keep it flatlined at that level. Um, and the rest seem to generally look like the forecast fit pretty well. So let's come down and see if it finished. Yep, it finished with the uh, adjusted forecast. So we have new statements there and we can um, look at the plot of um, SGNA and interest expense. Um, and now we can see whereas before, um, and here, let me just, yeah, we can see before that, um, the SGNA forecast, um, was just on its own, not a percent of anything. It's, it's forecasting the level. Um, but now we can see because we adjusted the config to make it a percentage of revenue and we adjusted interest expense to be the mean. Now uh, we have SGNA expense as a percentage of revenue is being forecasted. And the um, interest expense is now using a, an average method. Um, and even though we switched SGNA to be a percentage method, uh, we didn't have to do anything else. Fin statement is able to handle ultimately translating that back into the levels for the forecast. Um, and so then it's it's also often the case um, that so you've gone through, you've uh, 
done the initial forecasts, you've reviewed all the plots, you've adjusted the methods so that now all the plots look good. Um, but that's still kind of just the baseline forecast. You may want to manually adjust the forecast uh, based off of information that you have about the company, which is not reflected in the historical financials. Um, so if you know that the uh, you know, maybe they just made an acquisition, which is going to increase the size of the company, or maybe they're starting a new project, which is uh, substantially more risky than their previous projects. Um, there are a lot of different um, pieces of information that could ultimately adjust your forecast in the future. Um, and so in a statement, um, you're able to take the existing forecast and make adjustments uh, to it. So there's two ways. Um, you can you do adjustments or replacements. So adjustments going to take the forecast that was there and uh, tweak it upwards or downwards. And replacements are actually going to change what the forecast value is and just drop in whatever um, you wanted to have instead. Um, so what we're going to do here um, is here first we're adjusting cash so uh the cash um we're gonna make a, a list of zeros so zero adjustment uh, but then just set the second period here to a 40 percent increase and so now that is going to make it so that our second forecasted period of cash is going to grow by 40 percent and then go back um, to the regular uh forecasting and then with the second one, uh, we're doing that on revenue. And um, by default, this is going to adjust with growth rates. So you can pass use levels equals true to, for to adjust or replace on the level of the item. Um, and here, going to set the second period uh, forecasted revenue to 80 billion, uh, directly just replacing what that value was. So we can do that and then plot it to see the results of that. Um, so we can see in the revenue that the original forecast was much higher. Now we've replaced it by this 80 billion. Um, and so that one period just drops down before going back to normal. Um, and then looking here over here on the cash, uh, we can see after this first period, then it uh, has this big jump where it's growing by 40% um, and then goes back to the original forecast. So um, that's a quick overview of um, doing forecasts on complex time series with Finn's statement. So thanks for listening and see you next time.